Hi, right, today I'd like to talk to you about setting up your fusion reactor. Uh, I didn't initially intend to cover the actual build of the fusion reactor, but there's quite a few questions out there, and so I did want to go through it briefly. Uh, the first thing you want to do is lay down a ring of fusion coils. Uh, so you can see this is your standard, standard voxel circle. It's 321, 123, 321, 123, uh, and around like that. Once you have your ring of fusion coils built, you want to grab your fusion control computer and put it at the center of any of your three wide strips. Uh, so you're not going to be interacting with this with external blocks, so it doesn't really matter which one you put it on, uh, just whichever one's most convenient for you. Uh, once you put this up, you can look and see where all of the other components can go. So you can see that you've got three different other types of blocks that we're going to need here uh, in addition to our hull. So we've got plasma extractors, energy injectors, and material injectors. Uh, let's take a look first at our energy injectors. So our energy injectors can go uh, along the side of any of our single blocks there. So if we look, we've got four single blocks, and they can go on any of the four sides of each of those single blocks. Uh, depending on which reaction you want to run, you're going to need a different number of these energy injectors. Uh, each of them hold 10 million EU. So when you look at your reaction, let's go ahead and go into recipe mode here. When you look at your reaction, it'll show you how much you need to start it up. So if we look at our helium-3 reaction, uh, it'll show us that we need 60 million EU to get it started. Um, and because of that, we need six energy injectors on our fusion reactor. If you want to do the tritium-deuterium reaction instead, you would only need four. However, if you want to make uh, iridium or platinum, uh, you're, going to need ten fusion, you're going to need ten energy injectors on your fusion reactor. Um, one thing that's confusing to a lot of people is when they look here at this energy bar, um, it will stop before it's completely full. This energy bar assumes that you have all 16 energy injectors on your reactor. So if you were to have eight, for example, and they were all completely filled, this bar would be at half. Um, the only reason you would really need more energy injectors than this is because each of your reactions also does require energy to continue running. Um, so past our initial startup costs, we can see that each of our reactions also has a ongoing energy cost. Uh, for example, for the helium-3 deuterium reaction, we need 2048 EU per tick to be supplied, um, whereas our other reactions require 4096 and 32,000 and 32,000. Uh, so if you are not capable of producing that amount of energy per tick, uh, then you do need more energy injectors up front and to get those fully supplied to keep your reaction going and avoid additional uh, startup costs. Okay, so once we've got those in place, we're also going to need material injectors. Uh, and if we look here, we can see material injectors can go at the top and bottom. Uh, it shows a uh, material injector with a coil in between, uh, top and bottom on either end of either of our three wide strips. So here and here, here and here, uh, or on any of the other sides of our three wide strips. Uh, so a common problem that I see is people try and put these both on the top or both on the bottom, uh, and that will not work. You do actually need to lay them out, one on the top, one on the bottom, uh, or, or any pairing thereof. So for example, if we want to do our helium-3 deuterium reaction, uh, we'd pump helium-3 in the top and deuterium in the bottom. Same with tritium-deuterium uh, or uh, wolfram-beryllium or, or whatever reaction that we wanted. Um, I have always done this with the uh, top list of material of the recipe on the top and the bottom list of material on the bottom. Uh, so, for example, if we're going to look again at our, our fusion recipe here, uh, we can see uh, I would put the helium-3 on the top and the deuterium on the bottom. And I don't know if that's explicitly required. I've actually never tried it the other way, um, but it may save you some rewiring, and, and this way does, in fact, work. Uh, the next component that you need is your plasma extractor. I think they're listed here yep, as plasma extractors, okay. Um, so your plasma extractor can go in a number of different places. It can go on the front or back um, of, of any of your sides here. So we can put our, pla our well, fusion material extractor is the NEI name here. So this can go here or here, here or here. And again, you can use as many of these as you want. Um, only one is required. Uh, and those don't have to be with the material injectors. They can also go here, here, or here. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and knock this back down to one because they are much more expensive than the machine casing that's otherwise required. Uh, so once we have all of the 
uh, energy injectors, material injectors, plasma extractor, and control computer laid out. We just want to cover up all the other faces with our advanced machine casings here. So that's going to be, you know, I'm going to lay the top and bottom first just to make it easier for me to see. Um, so that's going to be underneath all of your fusion coils. And again, this is just your circle, so uh, you shouldn't be able to see any gaps there when you're done. I've got to lay it on the bottom, across the top. Whoop. Don't need you, buddy. And then on the inner and outer faces. So there's bottom, top. So the other things that we're going to need to look at are uh, how we actually get our materials in uh, and out of our reactor, as well as how we supply it with energy. So give me just a moment more here to finish covering this up. I know it's... Uh, I wish I had a better way to do this quickly. Maybe I could make turtles. All right, and outside. Doop doop. Oh, chest. Oh my. Okay, almost done. Don't worry, guys. Sorry for the uh, delay here. Okay. Thank goodness, finally done. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is how we actually get materials in and out of here. Uh, so you've got your material injectors, and they've got an in and an out slot in an internal reservoir. Um, so you can pump buckets or cells or, or whatever you have with your fusionable material in, uh, and you'll get the empty item uh, in your out slot there. And much like your diesel generator, they will show you how much liquid they currently contain. Um, so they do have their, their own internal buffer there. Um, and if you continue to place cells in there while their internal buffer, buffer is full, they'll just hold on to them. Um, and as that internal buffer leaves space for them, it will consume the cell and give you the empty cell back out. Uh, the exact opposite is true for your uh, material extractor. Uh, you want to pump your empty cells in. Um, as soon as it has in enough liquid in its internal buffer to fill it, it will give you a full cell, which you can then retrieve, uh, and it will empty the internal reservoir. Um, you can, of course, also use uh, liquid ducts or uh, liquid tesseracts or something like that. And you can pump the liquid directly in without using uh, cells or buckets. Uh, since I normally use applied energistics to manage things, I, I prefer the cells. Um, but, but that's entirely your choice. Uh, as far as the energy injectors go, uh, they can take, uh, I want to say, 80, 81.92 EU packets. Uh, so that is, again, different than 8192EU per tick. You can actually get more energy than 8192EU per tick into them, um, but that is the maximum packet size. Um, so I don't know of anything that makes more than 8192EU packets, so I think you should be fairly safe there. Um, but if you're, if you're not sure about the difference between packet size and EU per tick, um, you know, just try and limit the output of any individual block uh, to 8192 uh, just for safety's sake. Um, so once you have your your plasma out of here, oh, it's getting dark out, let's uh, change back into cheat mode right fast and make it daytime. Uh, so once you have your plasma retrieved from your material extractor, you've got to have something that you're going to do with it. Uh, and that's where our plasma generators come in. So our plasma generators, um, whoop, sorry, Greg Tech Blocks take a moment to set up. Our plasma generators will accept uh, helium plasma, so you can use helium plasma cells, or you can use the uh, the actual uh, the actual liquid helium plasma um, that you can get from using a, a liquid transposer or something of that nature. Um, these will give you back your cells. So if I were to put a cell in here, I will get my empty cell back out. So whether or not you want to transpose this in advance or not is entirely up to you. Uh, these plasma generators do put out 2048 EU packets, so uh, be careful the way you wire them and what you wire them into. Um, if you're using MFSUs, remember your MFSUs can only take um, 512 packets, and so we can fix that by running this through an HV transformer. Remember you want to connect your three dots to your three dots. So if we put this right here, it will step down our uh, 2048 packets into four 512 packets, which then allows us to run this across glass fiber cable uh, and into MFSUs, uh, which will accept 512 packets. Uh, the maximum throughput of an HV transformer is a single 2048 EU packet per tick, uh, because it will only put out five 
or excuse me, four 512 EU packets per tick. Uh, so you cannot wire multiples of these up to a single HV transformer if you want to get all your power running through them. Uh, and as I showed in previous videos, you can run about 31 and a half of these uh, plasma generators off of a single reaction uh, that's producing plasma. All right, so that is about it. That is the actual reactor setup. Um, once again, you've got your control computer, your energy injectors, your material injectors, your material extractors. Uh, that goes on your ring of fusion coils, and the rest of it is covered up by advanced machine casings. Take your plasma out, put it into your plasma generator, step it down if needed, uh, and then run it off into your system. And, of course, you can use this power to continue your reaction uh, by pumping that back into your uh, energy injectors there. Uh, so for the helium-3 deuterium reaction, you'll need one of these dedicated to pumping power back in. For the tritium deuterium reaction, you will need two of them uh, pumping back in. And you will need substantially more, uh, like uh, 16 of them pumping back in to fuel your um, material generating reactions like your, your iridium uh, or, pl or uh, platinum dust. So um, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.